Hello everyone and welcome once again to Stitch Bliss Corner. Mary Rose here. I hope everyone is having a good stitchy day. Um, now today I'm going to give a shout out. I'm going to answer a couple of questions that I got. I'm going to give a handy hint on how to get bugs out of the house without killing them. <laughs> and, uh, and send out some congratulations as well. Uh, first of all, i very much like to thank all the people that have commented and said such warm things about the piece that I did on Marilyn Levitt in Bloom. As I have said to a couple of people who've made comments, it started out being a bit of research on a designer and it ended up being a tribute to a wonderful human being. Uh, so. You know, my heartfelt thanks to everyone who has said such nice things. I mean, it, it wasn't difficult to, to do a piece on her that was nice towards her because she had great empathy and I think that was paramount with her. So, um, thank you. <laughs> now, the other thing I was going to say was... Congratulations to Bonna on achieving something that she's been wanting to achieve for a long time. Uh, and that was her grand supreme champion in, at the local fair uh, with her stitching. <laughs> Congratulations to you, Bonna. It's well earned. And I'm sure that uh, you, know, you have a base of many thousands of fans. And I think you've probably got more now. So well done. And the other congratulations is for Cindy from Cindy's Cross Stitch, who also entered pieces into her local show. And she got first for a piece called Seize the Day, S-E-A-S, -E the Day. And it's, it, it's a, uh, an, a nautical piece is what I'm looking for. <laughs> it's down at the ocean there. Beautiful, lovely work, as always, for Cindy. She has a very high standard that she always maintains. And uh, it's a lovely piece. So in, on her latest video, you'll be able to see that. Um, so well done. And thank you for the mention, uh, the dear little piece at the end of your video, Cindy. Thank you very much for that. Now, I have one shout out, and that's for Christina Liu. And I think she puts who on there as well. But Christina Lou, I'll have a link below. Uh, she's a very busy mother of four. Uh, she hasn't been stitching that long, just over 12 months, but she's stitching some interesting pieces. Um, she also spins wool herself, and uh, she held up a couple of skeins, and they're so even looking. I mean, it's fabulous. And she likes sheep. Yeah, so that's great. You know, my husband used to work on a sheep station once so <laughs> and he used to class the wool and all that sort of thing. It's quite an interesting area, actually, um, sheep and wool and how you can spin it from and make things. I mean, how great is that? And it keeps growing back again, you know, I mean, year after year. So um, what was the other? Oh, she, she homeschools. She's got four children. Uh, she homeschools and she also takes a class of uh, five classes of littlies for different things as well. So she's a very busy person. Um, so, you know, if you get the chance, maybe you could just go and have a look at Christina Liu, who is, um, how would you describe her? She's a doer and, uh, you know, uh, an achiever. So anyway, that's that's Christina. Now, I did get some questions about my stitching. And one was from, I think her name is Colleen from Why Not Knit. And uh, she also puts out videos that are very interesting. Now, she asked a question um, with the floss holders, where the floss is looped and tied in a knot. And she was wondering if there was a way of getting the next length of floss out without having to untie the knot and take the whole colour thread out of its hole. Well, 
Unfortunately, Colleen, um, I'm, I can't answer you there because I have never purchased one of those skeins where it's got the little tie on the top. I have only ever used DMC. Uh, and my system for DMC is that when I get the actual skein, I just take that off, you know, the pieces of the pieces that hold it into a skein, take those off, unravel the whole thing, and then I go for take the start end and the finish end and sort of have the two threads together, you know. Oh gosh, I'm explaining this well, aren't I? <laughs> what, um, what I mean is I keep doubling it over until I get threads that are a certain length. So once upon a time, for example, this was just a long piece uh, from the skein. And then I doubled it over when I got each end and so forth and then over again until I get the length that I want. And usually my length is about, uh, about that. And that's how I do it. And then with my latest one that I'm doing, the winter morning, I've got all my symbols there and the colors that go with it and the number. And then I've got my, I loop it through. And then if I want one strand, I usually just put my needle through one strand like that and pull and the whole thing, will, the whole strand will come out and then the rest will sit back down again. And then when if I ha don't use the entire strand, then I put the last, wait till I just, so if I've used this, this one here, and then I still have some left, I just loop it into the hole opposite. So it's ready to go again. I just see a lot of my stitching is I try to do it the most efficient way possible and the quickest way because I have so many things I want to do that I don't I streamline operations right from the start if I possibly can because that just makes life easier and I also when I'm stitching I do like to watch floss tube TV or you know something I don't like to just concentrate entirely on the stitching. Um, I enjoy doing it, but for me, the relaxation part is that I do not have to concentrate wholly on what I'm doing. And that's only because of all the preparation I make with all my gridding and my preparation like this and all that. So, <clears throat> excuse me, throat again. Uh, so uh, I'm sorry about if anyone does know how uh, to take a thread off you know those coiled skeins that the hand dyed people do with a little string on the top uh, maybe they could let me know and I could let Colleen know but it doesn't look as though it would be very easy to do that but I don't know because I've had no experience whatsoever with them <laughs> now Susan has asked me uh, can I talk about how I park my threads on the front and also uh, how would you best add on a stitch of a different colour? Um, and my advice to her was to go to Caroline Mazio's video number eight, her parking technique. And I don't think you can beat it. I, it she does a great job there. And any questions that you possibly could have, Carolyn has answered. Um, there is one thing, and I think Carolyn does do this in her video, is the loop start, which I do do the loop start, uh, but I've noticed some people, when they do their loop start, they do it from the back, and I don't really know why they do that, because it's not necessary. 
Now what I mean is, let me just see if I can show you. So on here, for example, if I'm doing my loop start, and this is the front of my work, I just put my needle in the front like that, and then bring it back through from the back. And Caroline does this. Then there's your little loop there. If you put your needle through that loop, and then just put your needle back in to the hole, it will automatically take your loop through to the back. So for particularly for people who are working on frames, you know, I'd much rather be able to do my loop front and then pull it through to the back than you know, I suppose you flip your frame over or whatever you do. Um, you know, it's just a lot easier. So I just thought I would show you that. You've probably seen it many times and probably know anyway, but that's just in case it hasn't occurred to anyone. Well, not anyone, but the individual person. Um, because we all have our faux pas, don't we? I've got a beauty here to show you shortly. But the other thing I was going to show you is my method for if, and I've done this really big, see those stitches there, that's over, you know, four stitches total kind of thing. But this is just to show you. Can you see there, I've got a looped up stitch sticking up. And I've done that because you know how sometimes you've got a great confettied area and suddenly you see a stitch that's sitting up. And if you go to take that stitch out, it disturbs all the other stitches and so on and so forth. And before you know it, you're in a big, <laughs> a big mess. Um, so what I want to just show you what I do. If I find that one of my stitches is sitting up out of the stitching like that. If you can see that. I've made it exaggerated to try and show you. And this is what I do. Now, I won't show you the bit where I, I go underneath the, at the back, because usually I run, I run my thread underneath the stitches at the back before I get to this loopy bit that I'm going to show you. But I'm going to just do my knot at the front here because there's no need to show you the back. It's really only to show you what I do with this loose stitch. Okay, so let's just assume that I've run my stitches through to the back or along the back and I've come out where my loose stitch is. So I'm just going to come out where my loose stitch is in the hole there. Okay, so it's just... It's just sti sitting there in the corner of where the loose stitch is coming out. Now what I do is I go into the center of the loop. So it goes through and twists around the actual proud bit that's sticking out. Then I go back down into the hole again back into the hole that I came out of and then I pull and the stitch goes down onto the other side. So do you want me to oh maybe I better do that again just to give you just to go through it again. Another colour probably would have been better because see you need the same colour as the thread that you're pulling through. Um, hang on a tick. 
to all them. See if I can loosen that up again. Yeah, there. This is better. I'll use a different colour thread. stitch without legging I do not know <laughs> right. so I'll just do a knot there okay so we'll see if I can make this show up any better the main thing is to just get that get that loop through so here we are we've got the bit sticking up that loose stitch and I'm just going to Take the thread through and then bring it up in the corner of the stitch. That's really all you need to know is to bring it up through the corner of the stitch. And when you've brought it up through the corner of where the stitch is coming out there just do a loop around see I've I, that's six threads I've got there because I wanted to make it big so you could see it but of course it's only two threads usually so you you, twi you just loop it round the actual stitch Let's see if I can show you the loop see how I've just gone round the thread and then you just take it back down through the hole you came out of, back down into there, and then you pull. Oops. That's not quite as good as the last one, but it does work well. And it pulls it through. So you don't have to disturb all the other stitches. Um, now if that's not clear enough I'm, I'm sorry but I think just to remember that when you've got your loose stitch as long as you bring your, up, your needle up through and just make sure you wrap it around the stitch that's loose and then go back down and pull it should bring the whole loose stitch down onto the other side and you can probably deal with it better there by you know stitching it a little bit to keep it from popping up but I've found that once you've pulled it down there it seems to stay there all right that's my little lesson on that <laughs> uh, now what was the other thing I've got here oh just you know if, if you don't do a loop start um, because I think she was asking really about how you start your your new colour. Uh, quite often I just run my colour underneath my other my existing stitches or I do a loop start or I do the pin stitch that Vonna and others have shown which can be quite useful. Um, so that's my free advice. Now this is just to show you one of my early disasters which I still look at it and I think, oh, that's such a shame. And it's a Celtic cross. <laughs> and I just didn't have enough fabric down the bottom. I think I just got carried away with myself, which is what you do when you're stitching to begin with. It's a bit like, you know, how you hear that someone has started uh, work and done you know, quite a lot to it and found that instead of going vertical on their fabric, which they needed to do, they went horizontal and it just didn't work. Well, it was the same with this. I think I just got so engrossed in what I was doing that I didn't uh, take into account that it just wasn't going to be long enough. And it just looks so obvious, doesn't it? I mean, what was I thinking? And I still have a connection to it because I haven't 
thrown it away or anything. So anyway, so I just thought I'd show that one of my early disasters. But I mean, you live and learn. That's the point, isn't it? I mean, experience, it's a, uh, a cruel teacher, but those lessons stay with you. That's for sure. Now, what was the other thing I was going to... I think now I'm just going to talk about the piece, the Robert Frost poem piece that I'm stitching or that I've begun. And last time I gave you the link to his poem, which I'll do again so that you can have a look at it. And I'd read that the poem that I'm talking about, Stopping by Woods on a Snowy Evening, uh, I read that he'd actually woken up from a sleep as if it was a almost an hallucination and wrote it. But in the introduction to the poem below where he reads it himself, and it's lovely, uh, the introduction person says that in actual fact he couldn't sleep and he wrote it uh, in the morning when he saw the sun coming up. And I thought that was interesting because the one that I chose to, the picture that I chose for the poem is a sunrise. So I thought it was even more fitting that this should be chosen for his wonderful poem. So I'll just show you where I've got to. I'll hold that a second longer because I'm very good at you know, taking it away a bit too quickly. And I'll just show you where I'm up to with that. So that's, that's the centre there. Oh, sorry, I'm making a racket here. Wait till I just move that. That's my hint for taking bugs out of the house. I'll do that shortly. <laughs> and it's, it, of course, you know, when you're first starting a piece and it doesn't make a lot of sense but anyway that's the the middle uh, and of course I'm loving it I mean why what's not to love so it's just in in this section here but the colors are lovely and I've had to put my scaffolding in every now and again just to reorientate myself because of course um, there are quite a few variations but not definition because it's not a definition piece until you stand back and look at it so anyway so that's where I'm, I've gone and if you're wondering why I've got this big expanse on this side well that's ready for the poem I'm going to put the poem on to the side of the picture and I am thinking of making it look like a page like two pages from a book but I'm not quite sure how that's going to work or if it will work but I thought well I'll leave myself enough fabric there so that I can have a think about what I'm going to be doing um, oh, I'll show you my bug catcher then I'm just going to do a quick update on the scout and I'm just going to show you a piece that I'm sending off to the framers this afternoon I think <laughs> so this is the bug catching way of getting things, uh, you know, if you've got a spider on the wall or something like that, um, or any little creature, because, you know, you kind of think, basically they haven't done anything to you. They're just in your space and you don't want them in it, which is perfectly understandable. <laughs> so if you can get them out of your space without damaging them, well, all to the good as far as I'm concerned. So this is what I do. If there's a bug on my wall, um, oh, well, how can I do this? Oh, 
I just need something to symbolise my wall. Right, so that's my... Oh, no, that's a bit obvious. Uh, <laughs> I might cut a bit out so that you're not sitting there dawdling. Um, let's just say... There's my bug, <laughs> and he's on the wall. That's the wall there. So what I do is I get a glass, and I quickly put that over him so he doesn't know what's happened, okay? So I've got the glass over the bug. Then I get a piece of cardboard, and this is a bit thick. I usually have a thinner piece than that. Then I get it, and I slide it under the glass and the bug now will be on top while well, he's disappearing because he's on the paper but he would be actually there so you've got the wall you've got the cardboard you've got the glass and you've got the bug in there and then you carry it outside and you let him go much more humane less messy and you know if you've got a child there they can have a look and see what a spider looks like without you know any danger to them or anyone else so it's just a thought right, so. then my last few things here update on the scout and he'll be an old friend to you by the time I've finished him because he's going to take a bit longer, that's for sure. I'm working now down the bottom there. <clears throat> this is the very bottom, oh, excuse me, my throat goes every time I do a floss tube. Um, that is the very bottom of the piece. Now bear in mind that it also goes out to here on this side and to round there on that side. So there is an awful lot more of him to go. Um, so, but he, you know, and I've, Harlequin, I'm still working on the Cezanne Harlequin, but I haven't really done enough on him yet to show you really. So it's, I'm not showing you this time. But he's just, you know, I mean, I, every time I work on him, I just love it. I mean, what's, it's just delightful. And as I've said many times before, so much confetti. But that's part of the process. And the piece that I've decided to send off to the framers is the Hokusai piece. And I, I thought I'd overdone it with the French knots. But then I had a look at his original piece and the chart that this came from. And I thought, no, I haven't. That's, in any case, you can't overdo something that you're happy with. I mean, even if, even if there'd only been three there, if I'd have wanted to do a hundred, it's my work, so I can put a hundred on there. <laughs> so, yes, yeah, so Hokusai um, is from his woodblock. I've, I've done a little bit about him in an earlier video. Um, you can see Fuji in the background there. And this echoes the shape of Fuji. And the great wave coming over, which Japan's had uh, centuries of experience with tidal waves and, and then the little men 
in the back there, there, another one there. So much movement and it's one of the most delightful pieces. And of course, see, I've got some pucker in there. So I'm going to get the steam iron out and I have a wonderful framer. He's very good, like that. He's very good at pulling and tugging at my work because, uh, because I use a hoop. Uh, because I think for me, that's part of the joy of stitching. I'm, I'm not a frame person. I think if I was going to do a hade, if I was going to do a hade, <laughs> if I was, I probably would think, well, maybe you'd have to use a frame for something gigantic because I think the scout is about as big as I'd probably go and I don't think I'll ever do anything as big as him again, really. Um, so I think hoops are fine for me and, you know, Doctor Who van fans, they call themselves Whovians. Well, I'm a Hoopian. <laughs> That's what I've decided. <laughs> anyway, look, mm, thank you. I'm sorry about my throat. I mean, it's worse than normal today for some reason. Um, thank you so much for uh, watching. Uh, thank you again for all your comments. Um, I really appreciate them. Now, as far as people have requested that I do some... Uh, videos on different subjects and people I will be doing them uh, I've got a list and there's one in particular I'm going to indulge myself with <coughs> excuse me I'm going to indulge myself with and that's Elizabeth I'm going to do Elizabeth the first of Queen of England I'm going to do that one day I promise myself I'm going to do that one day I'm just going to go through I have a purple book and I was thinking of just going through that and just talking about her as I went, just as a complete indulgence to myself, which is a bit selfish, I suppose, really, isn't it? Um, but I have some more topics that I'll be covering. And uh, so if anyone's asked me, don't, I haven't forgotten. I've certainly, it is on my list. Anything that's ever been mentioned or asked for, I've got it on my list. So I'm going now. Have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, all the best from Stitch Bliss Corner and Mary Rose.